Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to the New Brick Workshop. Now, we all want to protect our homes, our valuables and our families uh, from intruders, burglars or whatever else they might be. And there are a number of things that one can do to help oneself. But sooner or later, uh, one might have to install some form of, of security system. Now, I'm going to talk to you today about a CCTV system made by a company called SWAN and it is their SWAN DVR-8 4750 system. Now I'm really grateful to SWAN for sending this demonstration system for me to show you today. And I'm particularly grateful to the SWAN technical department who sent me a couple of extra long cables uh, to help me with the installation. Now before I go into the, the detail about security and setting up the system in particular, let me just describe what you get uh, with the system. First of all, you get a digital video recorder and this has a two terabyte hard disk inside. And that means it's capable of recording up to about six months worth of video before it has to start overwriting what it's already recorded. There are four cameras and I've got them set up on a piece of board here uh, just for a demonstration. And the four cameras are each three megapixels and they have a nighttime capability by having these little infrared uh, LEDs uh, here which come on at night and help to illuminate the scene. Now everything uh, that you need to set this up comes with the kit with the exception of the monitor which you see me using at the back. Uh, and if you need extra long cables, well, as I've said, uh, those are an extra, and I'm grateful that these were provided for me. Now, the cables that come with the system are each 18 meters in length. That means you can extend the camera away from the recorder uh, by up to 18 meters. Now, you do have to remember when you're thinking about these things that uh, the cables might have to go up along and then down again or vice versa down along and then up in order to uh, make the complete uh, route uh, between the camera and the recorder so you need to make sure uh, that your design of your layout uh, takes that into account now helping me today i've got uh, bob the burglar and you can see him just there in front of that camera and there he is on the screen of my monitor now one of the beauties of this system is that uh, you can access it remotely using your smartphone. It might be an Android device, or in my case, it is my iPhone. And there you can see exactly what's on the screen behind me. And uh, you can get alerts sent to you on your uh, iPhone or Android device, uh, wherever you might be in the world. Now let me just mention the instructions. There are three lots. Uh, first of all, there's the quick start guide. Uh, then there's the setup wizard that covers the uh, computery side of things. Uh, and then there's this instruction which covers how to set up your uh, Android device or your iPhone uh, to interact with the system. And these are really clear. There, there are diagrams and plenty of uh, uh, text uh, to guide you through uh, the various processes. Now the DVR is very straightforward. On the front uh, there is a USB a socket and then two lights, one to indicate there is power and the other to indicate that the hard disk is being accessed. On the rear we have eight uh, composite video ports for the, up to eight cameras but bear in mind we've only got four with this system. There's an audio in and audio out connector here. HDMI so this could be connected to a television if you wished. There's a VGA uh, socket here uh, should you wish to connect it to a monitor. And then you have two USB uh, sockets here and above that is the LAN input for connection to your router. And then you have the uh, port that you would use for the control of a, a pan and zoom tilt camera. And finally there's a socket for power in. Now in order to connect this up it's really really simple. On the end of the camera, you have an output lead for the video signal and a connector for its power supply. Now on the camera, the power supply is a socket, a red socket. Now on the cables, uh, one end has a power supply socket, the other end has a power supply plug. 
you have to make sure when you lay the cables that the power supply plug of the cable is at the end where the camera is and the end uh, which is the socket is close to the DVR. And then the connection at the camera end is simply a case of plugging in the power, making the connection for the video. It's a simple bayonet connector. Then at the other end, at the DVR, you have eight ports numbered one to eight. We've got four cameras, so we're gonna use numbers one to four. And you would plug your video cable into one of the numbered ports. And you do that for each of the four cameras. Now the power, for the cameras there is only one power supply. So they share the power supply amongst all four cameras. So you have a splitter lead. Here is the splitter lead. The power goes in at one end of the split splitter lead. Then each of the camera cables coming in gets one of these connections here. So in that way, you end up with four connections to your four cameras for power. You end up here with four cameras connected to the DVR. And that is really simple. Other connections you have to do, you have to connect uh, to your router. And this RJ45 cable would connect up here and then on to your router. You then need to connect either a television uh, via the HDMI uh, socket here or a uh, computer monitor via the VGA uh, socket there. Uh, you could have them both connected if you wish, uh, but you don't have to. Uh, one or the other would do. And finally, there is a power connection here for the DVR itself. And so the second power supply would be used to connect the DVR to power. And that is as simple as it is. It really is the most straightforward system to connect up. Now, when it comes to camera placement, uh, you want to try and uh, protect as much of your property as possible with each individual camera. And that might mean that the, uh, one camera in particular might be covering the approach to a doorway, but also uh, the approach to a ground floor window. Or it might be covering the gate to your property and also your garage door. So just try and think about how you can use these cameras effectively. Now the angle of view of the camera is 64 degrees. And there are plenty of tips in one of the instruction sheets about how to go about placing cameras where they should go. Now when it comes to fixing the cameras, there are three screw holes. And uh, at the back here, there's a route out which the cable can follow if you wish to then run the cable in the outside world to another place. Uh, there's a vulnerability in that, of course, that someone could cut the cable. Uh, I prefer the idea of having uh, the cable going directly into the wall from behind the camera. I think that's a neater solution and it's also safer. And in order to make this easier, I've made up a little template. And this template uh, has uh, three holes around the outside which match the positions of the screw holes on the camera and a hole dead centre. And I'd use this placing it on the wall and I'd then use a six millimeter masonry uh, drill bit to drill through each of these just to mark the position. And then I'd take this away and complete the drilling. And in the case of the center hole, I can get away with a 16 millimeter hole, which allows me to get all of the cable ends through. Now, when it comes to passing the cable ends, whether it's uh, the ends from the camera or the ends from the actual cable, uh, through a wall, I would advise that you protect uh, the cable ends with cling film so that you don't get dust or detritus into any of these connectors. Now, of course, you could be really nifty, neato, uh, by getting some of this 20 millimeter conduit and where cables have to pass through the wall, you cut a length of conduit, just the right size, have a 20 millimeter hole through the wall, and, and then your cables can pass through a very nice clean bit of conduit. Now, in order to get uh, a piece of string down a very long piece of conduit, feed it in just a little bit, hold on to the end, and then put the end of your vacuum hose on the other end of the conduit, 
turn on the vacuum and you'll find that the string will be sucked all the way down and it will come out at the other end and that works for 20-30 feet or more. And once the string is through the conduit you can then uh, tie uh, the string uh, to the cable ends and pull it through. Just one quick tip, when you're unwinding the cable uh, try and keep the bunch of cable neat as it was when it was delivered and then when you reckon you've got enough uh, unwound put these little retainers back on and that way you're going to keep the cable nice and tidy. Now for simplicity I'm setting everything up in the workshop so that I can now continue with the video and demonstrate everything to you. Actually uh, it would be a good idea for you to do your own test setup with everything connected to get together before you deploy it uh, just to make sure that everything works. I'm sure it'll be fine. And, and in my case as, as an extra reason I don't want to show the detail of how I'm going to install this system. And the reason is I don't want this video to become uh, an aid memoir for a potential burglar. Ooh. So uh, we're now on the set of instructions that looks uh, a little bit uh, like this. And one of the first things we had to do up here, it says create a password. And I've done that. Uh, step two is general configuration. Now I've got us looking at the screen of the monitor and I've adjusted the cameras. So uh, one camera shows the mouse, one shows the DVR, and uh, the camera which is there Will, will show me and I'm twiddling when I'm twiddling the mouse. Right, now if you're presented with a screen like that and you want to get to a menu, all you have to do is click once anywhere on the screen and you'll see this little pop-up bar that comes up. And as you run across uh, from left to right, it says playback, audio, PTZ, which is a pan uh, and tilt zoom camera. Uh, then you've got uh, zoom, you've got uh, image settings, you've got channel setting and then you've got exit. If I go to channel setting I can now get at the deeper menu system and when I click that because I'm now going into the system uh, what you uh, have here is a system login it's asking for my username and then I've got to enter uh, my uh, password and that now takes me into the menu system and there are a number of things that I can look at. 